the top 10 rock and roll documentaries. Um, this is like a four year old video. I've actually never seen it before. Um, I, I probably should have because I do love a good documentary and rock and roll, you know, combined to perfect combination. Um, so we're gonna check out what's on there. I'm not sure what is, but uh, we're gonna see. Man, MJ is the terminal for some reason, although he's a pop star, but sure. The creative process of your favorite artist? Sex, drugs, and rock and roll used to be a fun thing to do. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 rock documentaries. For this list, we've picked the most truthful, raw, behind the scenes documentaries that follow some of our favorite rock stars. Pearl Jam, Beatles. What is this? Daniel Johnston. The Devil and Daniel Johnston. It's like true, but science fiction is the I've never heard of this. Supernatural. I I can look up the ratings because I believe documentaries are technically movies if you really look at it like that, but who knows? Johnston may have the smallest name on our list in terms of recognition, but his documentary features one of the most compelling stories. Hello. Uh, Daniel, Daniel Johnson. Of Daniel Johnston. Viewers watch Johnston battle with mental illness. Daniel Radcliffe. I used to be Daniel Johnston. Who are you now? Hmm. It has an 8 on YMDB and a 77 Metacritic score. It's pretty good. And his obsession with the devil. If somebody's obsessed with the, with Satan, it has to be those old grannies, you know, that... Uh, that blame fucking metal stars for satanic shit. It's interesting to see how his That's pretty interacts with his creative process as he deals with the demons that haunt him. This introspective film won him the Documentary Directing Award at Sundance upon release. But the Mountain Dew came to me, and I drank it all Pepsi up. box. Now I'm happy as can be. Pepsi dispense, however you say it. It was like kind of just a shock. Mountain Dew lyrics were the Pepsi dispenser, sure. <laughs> to be like slapped in the face with um. Number nine. I, I am trying to. I uh, don't drink both because fuck it. Your heart. A film about Wilco. This calculated world of... Wilco's literally the last band that I think about that would make a movie or something. Um, that was a long ass title, so let's not uh, look that up. Yeah, fuck it. International Maybe if I just type in Wilco, I will find it. two members of a band clash, everyone around them is affected. As far as uh, my... Uh, feelings about it, I couldn't be happier. This documentary is as much about the conflict between Jeff Tweedy and Jake Bennett. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. I don't. As it is about the band's struggles yeah, with the record label and Wilco's struggle to make their fourth studio album. Was a the long band ass, uh, like, time. That's the record. We're finished. It gives great insight into how much labels value the bottom line versus the creative content of the artist, and the stress <laughs> that puts on the band members is almost palpable to viewers. Well, I just think we've been jerked around so many times, and, and that this is the ultimate jerking around. That's so us. Like, like, Never really cared for Wilco, honestly, but they have some mo good moments, I guess. So we're kind of excited that Michael's coming today. Number eight. Like in a movie set or something. Number eight. Michael Jackson, this is it. Oh, yeah. It's probably the most famous one. But again, Michael Jackson is not a rock star, he's a pop star. Piled of behind the scenes footage from Michael Jackson's final tour, this film was released after his untimely death, and fans flocked to see it. But um, somebody will probably say the same shit like I did in the comments. This is it. I will finally get caught for me being a pedo. However, the footage wasn't originally meant to be released. Oh my god. There was controversy over whether the studios did it to capitalize on his death. That's basically why they did it though. It's probably a mixed message of uh, cashing out with MJ 
they're still cashing them out, so there we go. Um, and probably for his legacy, so it's kind of a 50-50 thing, but if you really look at it, everything like that is a 50-50 thing. Regardless, this is it, is the highest grossing rock documentary of all time, and proof that Jackson will It's not rock, it's pop. She literally just said it. Grossing rock documentary of all time and proof that Jackson will always be the king of pop. The highest grossing rock and roll documentary of all time proves that he's the king of pop. Literally was my just fucking hell man. That doesn't make any sense. King of pop, yeah, rock and roll documentary. Jesus Christ man, what a mess. I mean, this probably is Rocky's song, really, but he is still a pop star. Fuck off, man. Number seven. Number seven. Fearless Freaks. There could be 15 people just hanging around the house. Uh, this this it got a. It's got a 7.3. That's not too good. And a 67 on um, on Metacritic. That's not really that good for the king of pop. Like a utopia. This doc traces the origin uh, of the freaks, this is. From their He's looking up everywhere. Yeah. We thought of ourselves as being some sort of no talent um, derivative. The fearless freaks. Kind of Fleet freaks. Fucking hell. No, that's better. They got a 7.9 and a 78 on Metacritic. That's alright. It stands out thanks to its candid interviews yeah. with Wayne Coyne, Stephen Gross, and their families. When you suffer in other areas, you try to make up for it with Joe. So we have smoke and lights and mirror balls, but if we can fool everybody else, you know, maybe we can sell some records. Nothing is off the table as they talk about their drug use and what the fuck? on their lives. He's like giant plastic fists. I think that Wayne is one of the bigger acid heads. You can see the Oh My God, it's a flame of album covers. Melting skull, he's riding oh, it's just the flaming lips. You know, the band that performed Miley Cyrus uh, ruining the Beatles yeah, again. Jesus Christ, fuck off. Scene of Frost preparing to shoot heroin. There you go, I just did it. I got a vein that was in my hand. You know, it comes on about 20 seconds and uh, comes over your whole body, and the whole body just feels peachy. How important is commercial success? Number six. Does grunge still exist today? <laughs> Number six, Pearl Jam 20. Oh, there we go. Eddie Vedder back in the day, man. Full of one. Filmmaker Cameron Crowe. Oh my god. I, I actually think that I look really similar to um, Eddie Vedder in like 91, like the beginning of Pearl Jam. If if I would lose some weight and if I never put on a pork country shirt, he actually has like uh, a dark green shirt. I have a dark green shirt of pork country. And if I actually put on that shirt and lose some weight, I actually we're like two teardrops of water, literally. What it was like to be in the premier grunge band during their heyday in the 90s. Oh yeah, lots of times. Especially when our singers are But I wouldn't like climb the fucking balls and like jump on the crowd. That's something I would never do. Like, like 50 feet above the stage and like all the trust, you know, it's like... You know, because maybe the people that you're jumping on don't see you, you don't know it. And they make you fall and you're dead, you know? Don't do that. <laughs> the doc chronicles the band's birth after Mother Love Bone's breakup to the present day. What made you decide not to continue with Mother Love Bone and perform for the children? Eddie wearing a bra. Makeup. He looks like a girl. It's different. And they saw me in a bra and that was it. <laughs> and they said, yeah. we've got to have it. And investigates radical changes the music industry oh, I lost the teeth. has been through Jesus. by using Pearl Jam's battle with Ticketmaster as an example. Oh, the issue at hand here is whether Ticketmaster is a monopoly, not whether it would have anything to do with our business or what our relationship is with our manager Let's or just get around the record. Oh, this is... I think this is a spinal tap. Number five. The kids are almost. <laughs> Director Keith Stein called this doc a hair raising roller coaster ride. I believe you also had um, Tommy. I believe there was a movie as well. Or maybe there was an opera. I don't know. As viewers are given a glimpse into 
into the behind the scenes live. These beat downs are smashing with his guitar. You gotta go on, man. Otherwise, all those kids don't be finished. They'll have nothing to live for. The kids are alright. The film's content shows the goofy sides of the band members. We actually have two movies. On variety shows and interact with fans. What the fuck? There are like two movies which are like really fucking cringy. What the fuck? Yeah, you have like two like uh, feel good family movies about it, and that's it. What the fuck? That's uh, pretty strange. Or maybe it isn't on one movie. Um, TV series, TV series. Yeah, so apparently. Oh, yeah, Night 79, there we go. It's, it's like the latest showing. Now I've got an 8.2 but no Metacritic rating. There we go. However, the best yeah, they also made a movie about Tommy and Quadrophenia, so there we go. The film offers are the final performances of Keith Moon during the recording session and a show at Shepherd and Studios. Won't get fooled again. Arguably the greatest rock song of all time. Anton is my friend and my enemy. The greatest inspiration and ultimately um, the doors. The greatest regret. Number four, Dick. Get ready for a massive concussion of rock and roll with the Dandy Warhols. A doc known Never heard about it. Controversial portrayal of the feuding band members in the Dandy Warhols and the Brian uh, Jones massacre. We don't want to be a dysfunctional family. We're responsible, much more responsible people. Dick creates a compelling story of the antics between the band's frontmen as they fought relentlessly with one another over the course of eight years. I decided to be jam house the day after they threw a party. It would be the perfect location for a Dandy Warhol episode. 7.8 and uh, 76 on Metacritic. Well, I didn't bother to if, if you if you Whether bother. It's a completely true story or not, the film was a critical success, and it earned the filmmakers the documentary jury prize at Sundance. This is one of my friends' bands that um, us between us and a couple other bands, we're actually going to kick off with a whole musical revolution. You can play Russian roulette for five years and uh, never get hurt. Um, this is probably almost famous though, or well, actually, this is pretty nice. <laughs> like some chicks in lingerie, so it's probably not almost famous since kids are in there, so it's probably Spinal Tap this time. One time you pull the trigger and it's all not, I believe that's not even a, a, a documentary, that's like an actual movie. Number three, The Decline of Western Civilization Part 2, The Metal Gear. Why did you drink, sir? Jesus. Lots of sex, the lots of booze, and some rock and roll is the only the way to describe of... this documentary. We do drugs, we do alcohol, that doesn't mean you should do it. Even though the film has never been released on DVD, it has garnered a cult Ooh. following among viewers interested in seeing debauchery. It, it's, 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 like, it's like a bad movie, but like by Metalheads, probably because Metal was in it. There's a 58 on Metal score and a 7.3 by, uh, by the people. So it's not really that good of a movie, but... Yeah, it probably has a cult following, you know, you have you have a part one which came out seven years ago. Which actually got a 93 on Metascore, it's pretty impressive and a 7.7 .7 on uh, MindDB. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, the second one I just told you and the third one has a slightly lower rating with with a seven, se 77 on Metascore. So actually, part two is the weakest one. Uh, uh, according to the score. Actually, do live like this as often as I can. The film features some infamous scenes of bands like Aerosmith, Kiss, Megadeth, and Wasp over in nice. Belgium. Megadeth and Wasp. There's other two. Yeah. Like like, like mm -hmm. Don't forget the one who made them all. Like room, night, you know, like the What's the matter? With it? I'm Stragglers, you know. Filmmakers received flack for the faked footage of Ozzy Osbourne and the exposure of hypocrisy in glam metal culture. I mean, you don't believe, you know, the last quarter of the bottle. So oh, Ozzy well, was it. acting in that. I didn't even know. Yeah. I thought he was just being himself. Just let me hit the mother Number two, the Beatles anthology. I thought it was help or something. Hours long. 
The Beatles Anthology recounts the entire How long? At 10 hours long. The Beatles Anthology recounts the entire 10 hours long, Jesus. ...of the band's expansive history. What is the anthology? It is the Beatles story. The miniseries first aired on TV in 95 and launched a resurgence Jesus in Christ. February. It does a great job of conveying just how huge Beatlemania was and continues to be even decades after their debut. Jesus. Was their single free as it's called a 9.4 on YMDB. That's pretty impressive. A copy table book and a compilation album. But it didn't get a rating from Metacritic. Should I go? We're just drinking tea. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes they have honorable mentions, other times they don't. Pretty strange. Uh, it might get loud. Yeah, I'm not gonna search this up. Jack White or something. Sounds pretty boring. Um, we Jam Icono. Never heard of it. Never heard of all of these movies, honestly. Documentaries. I love documentaries though, but still have to see more. <laughs> Rush Beyond the Lightest Stage. It wasn't the main one, but it was not. I would, uh, I would watch the heck out of that. Jesus. I always like to consider us the world's most popular cult band. That's fair. Uh, meeting people is easy. If you really look at it, it is easy, but nobody really dares. Shine a lot. Good uh, BDI song. We can burn Mick Jagger. Good line. Um, oh, I want to say Keith Richard, but Bob Dylan. Number one. No direction home, Bob Dylan. Alright. An artistic genius and legend, Bob Dylan has managed to become equal parts of that. No direction. I've been told about him. Sky 2005. Um, that's pretty good. So there's an 8.5 on YMDB and no, um, no Metacritic, but season 19, Jesus. Oh, American Master, there we go. I believe they said it as well, so. And sure enough, here's everything that they said it was. This doc offers perhaps the best glimpse into early Dylan as he tries to deal with the onslaught of fame and his unexpected success. Mr. Dylan, you seem very reluctant to talk about the fact that you're a popular entertainer and you're a most popular entertainer. Well, what do you want me to say? Or you jump up and say hallelujah and crash the cameras or do something? <laughs> it catches Dylan after his claim that he would retire from touring in the early 60s. Whether I knew it or didn't know it, I would say. It's not a bad idea, honestly. Uh, it's good. Quit for a while. Period you, you would go down as a Jimi Hendrix or something, seen as the greatest with like a like a really short discography, but flawless. He began to experiment with an electric sound that alienated his early fans. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite rock music? Gene Simmons, Jesus. For more eye-opening behind-the-scenes top tens, published daily. Be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Mm, yeah, that was pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I wouldn't really swap anything around. Maybe the Beatles at number one, but um, I haven't really watched any of these documentaries, so I might do that in the, in the future. Uh, Tot and Wildlife documentaries, please. You play network, what the fuck? They should renew this list and put Kurt Cobain montage of hack in it. Hack in it. Um, that's fair, yeah, I believe you got a documentary like um, a few years ago, so there we go. Michael Jackson isn't rock and roll, exactly. He's the king of pop, rock and soul. No, he isn't. 
It's just such so stupid that Watch Mojo puts him on the thumbnail and they say he's the king of pop and put him on a rock and roll documentary. That doesn't make any sense, but hey, whatever. Um, sorry, we'll go. Uh, let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. Sir. Okay, uh, follow me on Metal Storm, uh, on my other channel, other channel Shadow Realms, and on all music. That would be highly appreciated. Uh, let me know what you thought about this list in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. God bless you, take care, and peace.